Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about a couple of reasons why I think for transparency, even as a learning tool, uh, I think fitness YouTubers should all be using DEXA scans for their audience. So let me put on my Plus 5 hat of weapon spinning. Work on scaling up my craft a little bit, and let's talk about this. And you know, I kind of had and I put up all my stuff. You guys know the other day, I put up one with all of my data for the last three DEXA scans. You guys can see where every ounce of muscle and fat and bone density and everything is on my entire body, where I've gained, where I've lost. Um, and you guys can correlate that with how I trained at different points because all my workouts were put up, right? So it can show you guys a lot uh, as far as that goes. And I think that's something that all fitness YouTubers could do for their people. And I think it's actually a pretty good idea. You know what? And it can even help people learn things about themselves. Like even the people who are doing this, let's say you're an individual YouTuber and you might know a lot about training. I know a lot about training. But you know what? When you have a tool like that that can precisely measure where you're gaining or losing muscle while you're changing body composition, that can tell you a hell of a lot about if something you're doing is working or not or taking you in the right direction. Because you can't always just go by looks. Well, does your bicep look bigger? Does it look better? Well, maybe that's just your genetics coming out. But, you know, you've got to be able to look at it and say, how much is it growing? You know, because guys will stand there. You'll see tons of these guys will break out a tape measure and measure something. Does that measurement really tell you how much muscle to the gram? Is it telling you how much muscle you're really gaining in each area? Does it tell you how, what rate you're gaining it at? Does it show you how your sides are balancing out left or right? Things like that. No, it doesn't tell you a whole lot. It gives you a little bit. Um, and I think what people need to understand, most fitness YouTubers make pretty good money at this point. Uh, most of the guys who are up here doing this, making videos, if you're making videos every day and you're in YouTube fitness, you're probably making a living off of this. You can afford a DEXA scan, several of them a year, and they're tax deductible for you anyways, right? They're tax deductible. Um, might as well do them. And I think it really is a really, really valuable tool uh, because I can tell you when I've looked at during this, this cutting, when I've seen where I've gained muscle at certain points when I was training or doing things a certain way, because we tend to lose muscle. You lose muscle while you're losing body fat usually. You tend to lose lean mass with the muscle. It happens. But when you can pinpoint and say, hey, I'm losing muscle in my legs, what am I doing wrong? Whereas when I was over here at this point in the cut, I kept all the muscle in my legs or I gained a little muscle here. What was I doing right there? It's a valuable feedback tool for you, for you personally, that you can use. It's, it's like any other tool that we have to gauge our progress. This is modern technology giving us the ability to look inside of our body and assess changes so that we can look back and say, okay, uh, for this 12 weeks, this is what I did with my legs or my back or my arms or whatever. And this was going on with my diet. And I, I, this is how much fat I changed. This is how much muscle I changed. It can let you look inside your body and measure the exact amount of differences based upon what you're doing. It can give you feedback that you can use personally to say, hey, this is what's really working for me better. Uh, because you can do that stuff and say, hey, I seem to have gotten a bigger back doing whatever it is that you think you were doing, but you can compare two different phases and say, hey, I gained more muscle during this phase doing this stuff with my back than I did during this phase. Maybe I should go back and do more of this. This might work better. Hey, maybe that's what I should be doing when I cut later because it'll preserve muscle better. All right, it's a valuable feedback tool because it lets you measure your exact changes in body composition and the changes in tissue in every part of your body. That's extremely valuable. And it will let your followers know stuff. It'll let them see trends that they can look at what they're doing following your training to get an idea of what they might be able to expect from it. Not always going to be a carryover from what works for a YouTuber versus their followers, but it's good information. Uh, the other thing that I really, really like is the visceral fat thing because that's one of the ones I want to highlight. Because there's been a lot of accusations for me, and it's always, oh, Jason abuses gear. Jason abuses gear. Only because I've been one of the people who's been open about my past. I'm one of the only guys who's open about TRT, right, and, and, and all of that. I've been open about it, so therefore, there's this assumption that I'm some enormous gear abuser, right? There's this big assumption. And I've even seen people make knocks at, oh, Jason's on, well, I'm not on gear, though. I'm on TRT. Like, or he doesn't look a certain way, and they honestly think that I'm going to look like someone using a gram of trend. But you have all these other guys who are claiming natty. But we have studies. In fact, I'm going to link a review down below probably in this uh, because this is real valuable information. Uh, there's actual data out there measuring something, and it's visceral fat. Uh, the researchers found when they've looked at people who are uh, gear abusers and former gear abusers, there are changes that you can see in a DEXA scan. 
And I think that's one of the take homes. It's something I've been trying to point out to people. This is one of our concerns with, with abuse of these substances is the effect they have on, on your metabolic syndrome, certain things going on in your body, things like your organs, right? And a lot of that has to do with visceral fat. It has to do with visceral fat. And that's something that I want to bring back as a take home for people who are saying, hey, do you have any proof whatsoever that you haven't been using whatever they think I've been using, an enormous amount of test or trend or something else, which uh, I would say, okay, here's my visceral fat numbers. Here is scientific studies looking at visceral fat and gear users. Look at my numbers and compare. Now, the one of them that I'm going to link, it's in square centimeters, but you guys will notice that even at my highest body fat on a DEXA scan, my visceral fat was fairly low. It was in range for what the test group was looked at because they took that study and they looked at guys who are current anabolic abusers. They had the highest amount of visceral fat and the lowest amount of subcutaneous fat, right? And the lowest amount of subcutaneous fat. Former abusers, and I think they said they averaged that they had been off for two and a half years. They hadn't touched gear for two and a half years. They still had really, really elevated visceral fat. Even two and a half years after coming off gear abuse, they had the highest body fat, which again, possibly have to do with some metabolic issues they developed after coming off. But they maintained the overwhelming majority of the visceral fat over two years after coming off the gear. And then the control group was in the middle on body fat, obviously had the lowest muscle mass, but they also had the lowest visceral fat, and that's the fat around your organs. Um, and I think mine was just a hair above that. On my highest body fat, I think my visceral fat was around 1.5 pounds, and it's all the way down to 0 0.39 pounds now, right? But I'm actually at a much lighter body weight, and much lower body fat since then. But even then, I started just a hair above. If you were to transfer my cubic inches, because they had theirs listed in cubic centimeters in the study, I'm down there with the control group, and I'm way below them now. But that's the thing. Um, that would be the only evidence I would have because people say, well, I think you were abusing gear really high doses a year ago, right? That's what they could say. But you've come off and therefore um, you would test clean if we were to drug test you. Well, visceral fat gives you a longer term look. It's one of those tools that you do have based upon decent research looking at visceral fat, showing that abusers of anabolics have really elevated visceral fat. And you've got studies like that looking at people who've been off for two, two and a half years sometimes three years, who their visceral fat is still really, really high. The fat around their organs has increased. So, and it's not even just about me defending myself because I really don't care. I think at this point, if anyone thinks that the amount of muscle I'm carrying, if you think I'm blasting large amounts of gear, when you guys see the way I train, I train with heavy weights with big compound movements. I eat a lot of protein. I eat a lot of food, obviously, because I mean, if when I was weighing... 240 on that other DEXA scan, sitting at like 24% body fat, 23.7% body fat. I think it's fair to say I eat a lot of food. Food is very anabolic. Food is very anabolic. I love heavy weights and eat a lot of food. It's not unreasonable to say, okay, and as a former gear user many years ago, it's been longer than the two and a half years in the study. Um, yeah, I'm going to have some muscle memory to work with. But if anyone thinks that the size I'm at, given the training history I have and my food and everything else, that, that for me to be at the size I'm at that they think that I'm abusing large amounts of gear, come on, I don't think that's realistic. I really don't. Um, so it's kind of like people be like, well, for a gear user, you sure don't look like a gear user. Exactly. And my insides don't look like a gear user. Uh, maybe that should kind of be the giveaway that I don't look like a gear user, a gear abuser on the outside, and my organs on the DEXA scan don't look like a gear abuser or someone who's been abusing in the last few years either, right? So... Maybe I'm being honest. Maybe I'm actually telling the truth that I'm not actually abusing gear and haven't been abusing gear for quite a while. I don't know. I mean, my organs kind of say that that's the case. So it's kind of funny because I say I haven't been. My results say I haven't been, but then the internet says I have been, but then people say I don't look like it. Well, well no shit. No shit I don't look like it because I, I haven't been abusing gear. It's been a really long time. So... And I'm not blessed with the most talented bodybuilding aesthetic genetics anyways. And I don't buy, I'm not a bodybuilder either. I don't train like a bodybuilder. I don't have the genetics of a bodybuilder other than maybe my calves. Um, so I, again, it is what it is. But for a lot of people out there who are like, well, I think this guy does abuse gear. These other people, 
why don't they do some DEXA scans, right? Let's see how much muscle you have. You know, all these guys will talk about, well, I've got this much muscle. I think I'm bigger than this guy or that, of how they think they look on camera when they're all cut up and in the right lighting. Uh, man, do a DEXA scan. See how much muscle you actually have on your frame. How much muscle you got in your legs? How much muscle do you have in your back? I mean, it'll let you know. Hey, it'll give you an interesting comparison to tell against other people when you can't necessarily go purely off of shape. When you want to know do, if you really outmasked this guy, uh, has your training results produced a bigger back than this guy? It'll tell you. I think it's a valuable tool for that. And it's a valuable tool for looking into people's insides to see what's really going on there. There's a whole lot of guys who are like, well, I don't abuse gear. And people say, well, I think it's you do looking at you. Well, let's see how much visceral fat you have. It might tell us a lot. It'd be interesting. All the fitness YouTubers did it, but that'd be the one part. But I think the most valuable part is that it would actually give them personally feedback, measurable feedback that they can see for themselves how their body composition and muscle mass is actually changing over time so that they can look at what they're doing with their training to see how well it's working when they're doing different phases of their training when they change it up. And it, like I said, it really isn't that expensive. You're looking at probably at most $100 a scan. It's not that much. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.